welcome to the hot seat. On the hot seat, we tackle the toughest business questions, addressing the most pressing issues our business community faces today. We dive into the core of business growth and strategic development. Whether you're launching a startup, managing a growing business, or refining an established enterprise, we're here to provide you insights that you need. Get ready for candid conversations and practical advice that you can implement today. Stay with us and let's grow your business together. Hi everybody, Christian Lavolsi and welcome to another hot seat episode. I'm actually going to take this mic off, it's quite annoying. But uh, it is just me doing a totally solo uh, cast today. I can't even see if I'm live. Um, I don't know why, but the screen is different, but you are there um, and it is amazing to be here. Uh, today, I, uh, I want to actually talk about um, self-care and, uh, and, 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 and balance. Now, remind... I want to just remind everybody listening that balance is different to every single one of us. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect balance. Uh, for for people like me, I um, balance for me is 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 doing what I love uh, and and doing as much of it as possible. So it is a little different for everybody, and uh, and I'm really proud to be here today to share this episode with you. Um, what I'm thinking about uh, is, and I got asked this question. Uh, the other day and in one of our coaching calls, and I thought that I would share it with you. Uh, that question is, why is it important to invest in uh, personal renewal across physical, mental, emotional, and as well as spiritual dimensions? And I know that for some people, you know, that may not all be relevant, but investing in personal renewal across uh, physical, emotional, and spiritual dimensions is actually fundamental for sustained success, as well as uh, well-being. Um, it's it's about cultivating that holistic balance that enhances uh, resilience, uh, adaptability, and and the crucial traits that for any business leader navigating today's fast-paced world. And we all know how things uh, are moving very very quickly, and that that speed that we're at is uh, is causing burnout and exhaustion. So I think what's really important is um, physical renewal actually ensures that. You have the energy and the health to meet the demands of your role. Um, regular exercise, uh, adequate sleep, uh, proper nutrition uh, that fuels your body, you know, boosting productivity and, and any cognitive function. Um, so physical renewal is really important. And, uh, you know, I, um, I don't do much walking because as, as my doctors have, have advised me, I have you know, really bad knees as an ex-professional rugby player. Um, and you know, with four back fusions as well, but I have uh, started progressive weight training, really heavy, and it's been really amazing in terms of the amount of extra energy and vitality that I have. And that was always the biggest weakness in in my world was that I always kind of let my physical suffer at the expense of everything else. And so I'm now bringing that into order, and I'm fully committed to that five days a week. Um, and with that has come you know, a nutritional plan and we're tweaking that because I'm trained really hard and sometimes I need uh, more macros in one area than another, but it's a work in progress. Uh, and the mental renewal side, that involves um, engaging in activities that challenge uh, and expand your mind, okay? So continuously learning uh, and solving uh, problems, uh, what that does is actually, it keeps you really sharp. And, and can and spark innovative, innovative thinking, as well as keeping your competitive and forward thinking um, in business strategies, okay? Re really important. Um, what, what I want to speak to that about more so is, you know, I use everything from meditation to mindfulness to just grounding sheets and grounding mats and, um, you know, acupuncture and, and the works to get me really, really clear about what I want. But there's also some simple tactics that you don't have to go and do. Um, sometimes staring at a white wall for five minutes will actually allow your mind to uh, explore what it hasn't been able to explore. Uh, something else that uh, is really important is the emotional renewal. And that is all about managing the stress and nurturing the positive relationships, both personally and professionally. And it's crucial for maintaining motivation and morale. And it empowers you to lead your team uh, with empathy and resilience and fostering a supportive and 
productive work environment, which is really, really important if you want to grow and expand um, or even stabilize your business. Now, for me, you know, I made a post the other day about my wife. Uh, the biggest hack in the world that we don't talk about is about a spouse that actually supports you and believes in you. And, and that is not only, that's not even for the mental, it's for the emotional, and it's significantly important. And then the final piece that I want to talk about is, um, you know, the spiritual renewal, whether it's through meditation, reflection, or connecting with nature, it helps you align your actions with your values and purpose. And this, you know, uh, grounding can be a profound sense of fulfillment and drive, uh, which pushes you to pursue goals that that matter, matter deeply, right, to you and, and your community. So I guess I've, I've kind of covered it, but, you know, I practice meditation uh, to find my spiritual and emotional balance. Um, I do that with my guru, Bronwyn Coles, at least twice a week, and then I do it on my own every day. Uh, I read and attend workshops uh, on mental growth uh, or for my mental growth. And I, and I have started, you know, that, as I said earlier, a very rigorous weightlifting, weightlifting schedule. Um, so this comprehensive approach to, I guess, uh, self-renewal not only has improved my personal well-being, but it also reflects in our company's culture. And it's actually led to greater customer retention. We're at 95, 95% retention rate in our programs. And what it also has created is higher engagement rates with all of our stakeholders. Because what it's given me is an opportunity to showcase that other side of my life. And, and look, you're not going to get any weightlifting training videos anytime soon. Um, there's a long way to go. We've got a, you know, a goal of a kilo a week in reduction. So this is completely against everything that I've always done, which is always go hard, go fast. But now it's kind of like go heavy and be smart. And you know, I've got all the right people around me to support me, um, and which is really important. So in essence, neglecting any of these aspects uh, can lead to burnout and inefficiencies, making it you know, crucial uh, to develop a balanced renewal strategy to maintain peak performance in all areas of your, of your life. So that, um, to me, is why it's really important. And there's some of the things that I do, and I hope that that helps you and that that serves you. Um, another question that I was asked around this um, just recently in, in, in our programs was, how can leaders promote self-care and balance within their teams? Now, this was really interesting because I talked a little bit about self-care last week or the week before uh, when we got the sad news that Kerwin Ray had passed away. And, and you know, and self-care applies to all of us, okay? Not just the leaders, it's what we do with our teams, it's it's how we nurture them and, and how we work them through. So, you know, leaders play a pivotal role in promoting self-care and balance uh, within their teams, but also with stakeholders and, and setting the tone for that healthy working environment. You know, Dan Martell um, really, 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 really drives this. You know, he's he, he does uh, walks every morning, hikes, uh, taki more, they do the same. They're always constantly putting um, movement into their work environments to keep them sharp and keep them active. Um, you know, some of these guys have saunas and cold rooms and ice baths and they do all of that and they balance it out all throughout the day. You know, it's not everyone has those resources available. However, um, this is modeling behavior, okay? So... Uh, leaders should always lead by example and by openly prioritizing their own self-care and work-life balance, leaders can actually set a precedent and create a culture where such practices are valued and encouraged. Now, so when team members see their leaders taking time for physical activities, mental breaks or personal development, they feel more empowered to do the same. And in our organization, we absolutely encourage it. You know, Simone runs almost every day. She goes to the gym. Uh, Bonnie runs, walks like more than she needs to, I think. Um, you know, their whole team is very, very active. And I think that's kind of the kick in the ass I got where culture really is driven from beneath. Uh, it might start at the top, but it's driven from beneath. And that's really what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to do those things. So, you know, another thing is to implement policies that encourage work-life balance. Now, this could include uh, flexible working hours, um, no email policies during off hours and mandatory leave. So clear boundaries actually help prevent burnout and, and show that the organization respects and values uh, the personal time and well-being of employees. I'm, I'm getting uh, pinned messages everywhere at the moment. Um, so, 
you know, you've got to offer resources such as wellbeing programs, professional counseling, even self-care workshops. You know, we do these for clients now. And these initiatives can actually equip team members with tools and to manage stress and enhance emotional resilience and as well as maintain physical health. I think uh, often as a society, we're getting a little weaker in this space and, and we're starting to, you know, everything's too hard. And I think that's because everything's been too easy. You know, I look at my grandparents and, um, you know, they're, they're immigrants that came over in boats in the 50s or the early 40s, the late 40s and 50s. And man, they worked hard and they were mentally tough, you know, so tough that then they kind of screwed up their kids and then their kids kind of, you know, screwed the next generation up because they made it all too easy for them. And so now we've got this cycle that's changing. And, you know, I mean, everyone everyone thinks about this differently. This is my opinion, um, but that's what it is. So look, the, the way to combat that is to offer resources all the time and encourage people to do what they need to do, but also building and enhancing that emotional resilience and that, um, and that physical health in your organization will actually drive retention, okay? And also attract the right people. So, you know, um, You've got to foster an environment where you check in regularly, right? Um, and, and that's the norm, not just about work progress, but also about how team members are feeling. And we recently had this conversation um, in one of our masterminds and, you know, people were like, I should have known that this person was dealing with this. And I was like, well, why aren't you doing one-on-ones every week like you're meant to? And it's like, oh, they kind of fell off the radar because people didn't, you know, we, we didn't have much to talk about. And well, then why don't you just narrow it down to 15 minutes? You know, spend five minutes asking about their wins, ask five minutes about how things are going generally and, and be really interested in that shit. Don't just kind of go, oh, so how the kids? You know, like, what did they get up to? What did they do? Who's playing sport? And get an understanding for the people that you work with. You have to care. If you don't care about the people that you work with or even your clients, like this week I have been calling, um, well, I think seven or eight of our growth school members just to check in with them, even though I see them every single week. And we've got game plan. We've got Wednesday coaching call. We've got game plan this Friday, right? I still check in on them because I want to be ready for game plan, right? I want to be ready and know where their mind is at and where they're heading and what they're doing. Yeah, that's just me. I'm so invested in our clients that I just want to level them up constantly, step by step, process by process. And that to me is, is just part of how I am. So another thing that we have to do all the time is we have to acknowledge not only the achievements, but also the efforts of the team. Effort is really important, right? Celebrating those small wins and recognizing hard work will boost morale and motivate team members, but also it will actually reduce the feeling of stress and burnout. Now, um, I remember, and I think this is purely by memory and I might be wrong, um, but uh, Scott Farquhar and Mike Cannon Brooks at Atlassian implemented, they were one of the first companies many, many years ago. Uh, they implemented like wellness days. And I think maybe it was them that started, you know, Wellness Wednesdays. And it was an initiative where at the first Wednesday of every month, it was actually dedicated to team activities that focused on mental health and relaxation, um, such as groups, group sessions uh, like yoga, mindfulness practices. Uh, I think they did uh, workshops on nutrition as well. Um, now, I know Google and other companies have really invested heavily in this, um, but it's not just the big companies that need to do this. If you're a team of two or three or 10 or 20, you could actually do these things and they're relatively low cost, but the out, the output, the performance that you receive, the productivity, right? And the respect and the retention of your employees is significant. Okay, so I need you to consider that. So you've got to incorporate these strategies that I'm sharing with you today because leaders can create a supportive environment that fosters that long-term sustainability, but enhances also, uh, and also enhances, sorry, the team performance throughout that, throughout that improved balance and well-being. And to me, you know, sometimes it's hard when we're, when we're spinning and we're working at speed to remember that. And that's what's really important to look at the frameworks that are available to you and, and how you can utilize them. Now, the third question actually came this morning uh, from someone on Instagram. And I thought, well, I might answer it on here today. And it was, uh, what, what, um, what are practical ways that individuals can incorporate the habit of sharpening the saw into their busy lives. Now, you know, I was like sharpening the saw, sharpening the saw. And I'm thinking, yep. So sharpening the saw is actually a metaphor for continuous self-improvement and maintaining one's effectiveness. Okay. So, um, you know, some of the practical things that individuals can incorporate into their, in, in say, into habits 
uh, particularly into their, their so-called busy lives, right? Like people say they are busy, but really, are we busy? Or are we just procrastinating to look busy, right? Um, is actually treat self-care like a critical appointment. Okay, and that's what I do. So block out time in your calendar for activities that rejuvenate you, whether it's exercise, reading, pursuing a hobby, um, you know, making it making it part of your schedule will ensure that it actually gets the attention it deserves. Um, and I and I do that. So you know, my 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 training sessions are all at ten thirty every single day. You cannot get an appointment with me between uh, ten and uh, eleven thirty any single day. Um, that's when I train. Right, it's the time zone that uh, Trent my my uh, nutritionist and personal trainer has available and that's the time slot that I've dedicated to it um, if I didn't block it I wouldn't be able to do it uh, so the thing is it's like you know set small manageable goals right like so break down a larger goal like I actually have a goal that I want to um, lose uh, about 70 kilos I, I know it sounds ridiculous but uh, and my wife thinks it's ridiculous but I want to get to a particular weight that I haven't been since I played professionally and it's really, really important to me. Now, whether or not I get there, it's it's the journey that matters. But what I've done is we've we've established really small micro goals of one kilogram of body weight uh, lost per week. Now, considering that we're lifting heavy and I've got muscle memory, we're we're hitting that target. We're hitting a kilo, um, and then we'll go on to the. Um, onto the, uh, the, the body scanner um, at every three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, and we'll actually check on how many uh, kilos of lean muscle I've gained and how many uh, kilos of body fat that I've actually dropped because the body fat uh, ratio uh, changes significantly and the scales are always going to lie. And we've done body measurements and all. And again, it's just breaking them to small because in the past I've gone for really big, gigantic uh, BHAGs, but on a very short time frame. And that's just kind of led me to disappointment in my personal health. Right in business, it works great for me, but I couldn't apply the same thing to this. And so this is the first and biggest change that I have made. Um, you know, uh, leverage apps and and tools designed to promote self improvement. This could include meditation app, fitness trackers, online courses that enhance your skills. And because technology can actually be a very powerful ally in managing your time and your resources effectively, it can also be a bloody fucking distraction. Right, so um, wow, I think that's the first word word I've made this, this whole episode. But I think that's 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 a big thing, right? So um, you know, I track all my training sessions. We look at the active calories that I've burnt, and and then the total calories that I've burnt. I track all my food, even though I know exactly what I'm eating because the meals don't change a great deal. I am putting them all into a diary tracker because I want to actually know, um, you know, if I'm actually getting hungry. Trent wants me to know at which point do I actually start getting hungry. And to be honest, you know, uh, one month of training or 15, 16 sessions that we've done, I'm now starting to get hungrier. And, you know, I'm already doing four meals a day and it's a question of, you know, and they're not huge, but, you know, I'm feeling full when I'm eating, but then I'm getting hungry faster, which what he's trying to do is actually get my metabolism to reactivate because it's been slow and sluggish and everything else. And and trust me, guys, this shit's been really hard for me because um, I work on really uh, high energy, uh, adrenal, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm grounding and using grounding mats. I'm actually way more chilled, right? And also I had that fall three weeks ago. So my back's been a shitload of pain. And so there's all these other things, but I'm not letting any of those things stop me. I've got a goal. I'm going to follow it. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to make sure that it gets done. Um, the, the big thing for me is you've got to allocate time uh, weekly and monthly to reflect on your personal and professional growth, right? So what you've got to do is you've got to assess what's working and what isn't, and you've got to adjust those strategies accordingly because uh, this reflection can help you stay um, aligned with your goals and recognize areas that actually need improvement. So ladies and gentlemen, I think that's super important. For a lot of things, right, uh, I also strongly suggest that you join some kind of community. Uh, when it comes to my physical uh, help, I've got Trent, and that's who I work with, and he checks in on me all the time. But, you know, in business, we 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 are also, I mean, I have two coaches, you know, Taki Moore, Dan Martell, you know, and Dan Martell is coached by Taki too. So, you know, it's just, I've gone and selected very specific people for what I need, because you know, for me, my clients need strategy um, and then they need the execution pieces and the tactics and the micro tactics. And so sometimes I'll go in search of those from other places. But any coach or any advisor that doesn't have advisors and mentors isn't worth pursuing, right? Because that means they think they know everything. And so more, more often than not, 
a lot of them don't do it because they can't afford it. And if they can't afford it, then are they actually the right person that you should be listening to? So surround yourself with the right people that are going to motivate you, inspire you. It could be one, it could be five, whatever it might be. But remember, Jim Rowan says that you're the sum of the five people that you spend most of the time with. So make sure that you choose who you hang out wisely. Okay. Um, and I think the most important one is that you've actually got to listen to educational podcasts during your commute, uh, audio books while you're exercising, and uh, because this can turn that that that, that this can turn um, routine activities into opportunities for learning and growth. Like I get in the car, bang, it's an audio book and it's playing. And you know, I've got this thing where I'm trying to listen to a book a week and read a book a week, and I'm not just listening to it, but I'm I'm doing ten pages, you know, 10, 20 pages a day. Depends how I feel. Right, and so I can nail it. But the whole idea is, if I'm really into it, I'll read 50 pages, and I'll just keep going. Right, and so I can I can nail you know a book really easily in that time, and I think that's really important. So look, by making self renewal a consistent part of everyday life, uh, you uh, can maintain your effectiveness, you can adapt to changes, and you can achieve sustained success in both your personal and professional lives. And so, you know, I think that you know. I don't know how long the episode's gone because I haven't got a lot of the data in front of me. As you can see, I'm in, in a different room. Uh, we're actually building a den, a studio. So uh, there's going to be you know heaps of uh, different backdrops that we're going to be playing with, camera angles that we're working with. Um, you know, we're just trying to make it a bit fun, a bit quirky, and a bit interactive. So I don't even know how I'm going to stop the broadcast. But uh, what I want to say to all of you is thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of the hot seat. Um, uh, now, we're probably going to be changing the format of the hot seat. At the moment, Simone has uh, been unavailable at this time slot. Um, might be Lucy, my wife, might be joining us. Uh, we've got some really cool, exciting bits and pieces, but the content is, I know, what we really want to deliver on uh, to show you our expertise and, and to show you what we do behind the scenes. And until next time, uh, as always, uh, live with purpose, ladies and gentlemen, and I wish you a wonderful, beautiful uh, evening. Thank you for joining us on The Hot Seat. We hope today's session gave you valuable insights to drive your business forward. Remember, every challenge is an opportunity for growth. Every question brings us closer to the answers that can transform our businesses. Stay connected with us, follow our journey, share your thoughts and be a part of our community. And don't forget to subscribe, like and hit the notification bell so that you never miss future episodes. Together, let's elevate your business to new heights. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on The Hot Seat.